On today's show, a new way to care for patients, being hospitalised at home instead of a hospital ward. Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine is now authorised for use in children aged 6 months to 4 years. And how will you be spending the Formula One weekend? We've got some fun things for you to check out. It's Thursday, September 29th, and you're watching The Big Story with me, Chiao Suen. Subscribe to The Straits Times channel to stay up to date with our live news updates. Now here's a glimpse into the future. Imagine suffering from a skin infection and being able to be hospitalised in the comfort of your own home instead of a hospital ward. There are now pilots underway on these so-called virtual wards and as my colleague Kimberly Jiao reports, they're already bringing a number of benefits to patients. You've heard of remote meetings and interviews, but what about hospitalisation? As part of a new Ministry of Health-endorsed virtual hospital wards pilot, the Mobile Inpatient Care at Home, or MIC at Home, program allows patients to receive care while staying at home. Patients uh, get into the MIC at Home program, um, they are either referred by their primary specialist doctors or uh, through screening by our MIC at Home team. Once patient has been deemed suitable for the program and has consented to the program, Anas will actually uh, visit the patient in the ward to deliver mo monitoring equipment and teach the patient how to use the monitoring equipment. And then once the patient is home, uh, our doctors and nurses will actually visit the patient daily to review the patient's condition as well as to um, render treatment that is uh, required. And this could be done through physical home visits, it could be done through um, tele-consultations such as video consultation as well as remote vital signs monitoring. Once the patient uh, has completed his uh, treatment and has recovered, our team will uh, physically assess the patient to ensure that the patient is uh, fit for discharge and then the discharge medications and documents will be sent to the patient's home. Suitable patients include those with general medical conditions such as skin infections, urinary tract infections or even COVID-19. I think I was on three-day treatment under the home care program. There's totally no challenges at home because you are not restricted to anything, except you are not allowed to leave the house. The feel is totally different between home treatments and hospital treatments. The pilot is set to end in March 2024, following which the data will be analysed and the health ministry will decide if the pilot is to be mainstreamed. So based on our pilots, uh, we saw about 20% savings uh, in terms of gross hospitalisation bill and this is something that we will validate and try to reproduce uh, under the sandbox uh, with the uh, set parameters. The acute bed demands are ever increasing. With this demand, the conventional solution is that we can build more hospitals and we can build more healthcare facilities. Then therein lies the question of whether or not we can have an alternative to this conventional solution of building new hospitals. Can we do it in the comfort of patients' home? Can we do it in the community? So this is where we are believing that uh, patients um, at home, and if they can be at home, should be treated at home. Maybe in the not too distant future, we no longer need to uh, be bound by the mindset that if I am sick, the only place that I can be treated is the hospital. As the population ages and in the face of potential disease X outbreaks, this hopefully means a new and more comfortable alternative to hospitalisation. Kim Lee Jiao for The Straits Times. In other medical news, the Health Sciences Authority has authorised Pfizer's Comirnaty COVID-19 vaccine for use in children aged 6 months to 4 years. The vaccination regimen for the primary series in this age group consists of three doses. The first two doses to be administered three weeks apart and the third to be administered at least eight weeks after the second dose. This is the second vaccine authorised for use here in children in this age group. The first being Moderna's Spikevax vaccine. And the wait is finally over. From October 13th, you can visit Taiwan without serving quarantine upon arrival. With more than 99% of COVID-19 cases showing no or only mild symptoms, the government has relaxed restrictions in its new Taiwan model. Arrivals will still need to monitor their health for a seven-day period and take rapid COVID-19 tests. Taiwan is one of the last few places in Asia to have largely maintained its border controls, although in June it cut the number of quarantine days for arrivals to three. 
Meanwhile, Japan had also earlier announced that it will resume visa-free travel and allow individual tourists to enter the country from October 11th. Joining us now is ST correspondent Yip Waiyi. Thanks for joining us today, Waiyi. So Taiwan had kept some of its entry and quarantine rules in place, even as large parts of the rest of Asia relaxed or lifted theirs completely. So why is Taiwan relaxing their rules now? What are some pressures that they are facing? Okay, so I think, um, you know, as we know, when the pandemic, with the pandemic, the borders were closed for a lot of places and the tourism industry in Taiwan has just been truly battered, um, especially since they did close the borders for so long and they were so strict about it. So, you know, in 2019, they saw a record 11.8 million visitors, which is really great for, for their tourism board. But last year, it was just a dismal 140,000. So it's clear that the local tourism industry is just really eager for the borders to reopen and so that they can, you know, make some money and welcome tourists again. So clearly tourism is a major priority. So what is the reaction from the Taiwan travel industry? Yeah, um, so I'm sure they've been very excited about the announcement. There were already, we've already seen hints of this coming. It, it's not a complete surprise. Um, it was, Taiwan does a gradual reopening. So, but for a lot of them, I think they have been waiting for this for a long time. So, you know, I spoke to this Sky Lantern shop owner in Shifen. This is a very, very popular spot with a lot of Singaporeans. They go there to, you know, write their wishes on the Sky Lanterns and they release them into the sky. It's quite a picturesque um, activity. And so this man, he's 73 years old and in his life he's never seen it so quiet before it's, it used to be always packed prior to the pandemic and um, ever since then it's been eerily quiet so I think he he was telling me he's just like he can't wait for people to come back and uh, go to a store and you know take pictures there again the things must be really exciting for shops in Taiwan and with Taiwan finally welcoming visitors again what are some things that tourists can look forward to any new spots that you recommend Sure, yeah. Um, I think a lot of, for a lot of Singaporeans, the most excited that they are about is just to go to Taipei first um, and redo everything that they used to do. You know, to go to the night markets, to eat all the yummy street food. Um, but I have spoken to a, a Taiwan travel agency and actually during the pandemic, because they boosted their domestic tourism offerings, they've actually tried, to, they're going to try to pivot and make that um, offerings to for international tourists as well. So for example, they were saying that they've worked with some Taiwanese indigenous groups and um, also local food sellers. And they've uh, established a few pretty cool railway routes where you can travel throughout Taiwan and just, um, you know, really try very local dishes beyond Taipei. And there's also, if you're a cyclist, you can go on cycling railway routes. So you can bring your bike on certain trains and really cycle your way from north to south of Taiwan. So that should be pretty exciting. Definitely sounds like I've got to add Taiwan back of my, on my list of places to revisit. Thank you so much, Waii. This has been ST's correspondent, Yip Waii. And here's even more good news. One more long weekend to enjoy in 2023. The Manpower Ministry said today that Visak Day next year will fall on Friday, June the 2nd instead of the 3rd. This means that we will enjoy seven long weekends in 2023 instead of six. Time to plan that weekend trip. I know I will. Rules to tackle online harm in Singapore are expected to be rolled out as early as next year. The proposed measures, including content filters and user reporting tools, have received support from the public after a month-long consultation with the Ministry of Communications and Information. Shares of sets have plunged 20% a day after the ground handling and catering provider announced it's buying the world's biggest air cargo handler, WFS. Investors don't like that the deal will be partially financed with a $1.7 billion equity fundraising. And the latest on the saga involving the couple who were allegedly linked to a $32 million luxury goods scam. The two Malaysian men who allegedly helped Singaporean P. Jia Peng and his Thai wife Pansuk Siriripa flee Singapore were each sentenced to a year's jail. They admitted in a district court to their roles in helping the couple and pleaded guilty to offences under the Immigration Act. Lights out, here we go. Formula One fever is here. And even if you aren't a fan of high-speed motor racing, fret not. There are many other fun ways you could be spending your weekend. 
You can catch one of the many musical acts at the Singapore Grand Prix concert at the F1 Circuit Park. There is something for everyone, with more than 75 performances with acts such as Marshmallow, Westlife and Green Day all featuring on the bill. I, for one, am looking forward to seeing Green Day. And for Formula One fans who don't just want to attend the race, there are also various Formula One related pop-ups along Orchard Road. If you are looking for something fun to do with the kids, LEGO Group and McLaren F1 are giving you the opportunity to belt up in a life-size LEGO replica of a McLaren Formula One race car. Participants can also build their own LEGO F1 race cars and win prizes. You can also drop by the House of Dreams exhibition at Ion Gallery, where over 600 Barbie dolls will be on display, including race-themed dolls. And what's an F1 weekend without the parties? The most exclusive Ember Lounge party at the Clifford Pier at Fullerton Bay Hotel allows guests to rub shoulders with members of the F1 fraternity as well as other celebrities, all set against the breathtaking views of Marina Bay. And to nurse that Saturday hangover, Lavo Italian Restaurant and Rooftop Bar is also hosting a special race edition of Party Brunch with a specially curated race-themed menu. So if you haven't made any plans yet, it's not too late to gear up and get your party engines going. And speaking of getting your gears going, the drivers certainly are, and things are getting real steamy here. Carlos Sainz sharing this clip of him in the sauna, working out a sweat to get used to the extremely hot and humid conditions here. Such commitment. I sure hope this helps him this weekend. And those are our top stories. Visit straightstimes.com for more news and our YouTube channel for more videos. Subscribe by hitting the red button below. I'm Chiao Suan and I'll see you tomorrow on The Big Story.